hey there. Welcome to day three. I'm Lisa Jamis of Tarot Solutions, your guide and host of the five day tarot, tarot tips and mini lessons. How to learn the tarot in five days. And today we are going to talk about court cards. So day one, we talked about my first tarot little mini lesson, which was say what you see and tell a little story. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can click on the link below and uh, in the YouTube you know, body of text there, and it'll take you to lesson one or uh, day one. And then day two, we learned all about the suits. So again, that'll be linked below so you can kind of catch up if you're interested. All of these things I'm doing for the next five days are to teach little mini snippets of what I teach in my Dabo to Diva class, which is my online tarot course. So today we're talking about court cards. So court cards are actually some of the most misunderstood and most challenging cards to read in the whole entire deck, believe it or not. A lot of professional tarot readers even struggle to read them. And I know when I was first learning, I was completely mystified. How the fuck am I supposed to learn these goddamn things? What do they mean? Are they people? What? I, I was so confused. And I read lots of books about it. And there's actually a great book by, uh, I think it's by Mary Greer, I believe. And it's all about court cards. I highly recommend that one. I'll include the link below on uh, Amazon so you guys can check it out if you're interested in learning more about court cards. But once I started kind of figuring out the key to unlocking the meaning of court cards, it becomes super easy peasy. And what I teach in my class, which I'm going to share with you a little bit, is little mind tricks and mind hacks with how to remember what they mean when you see them in a spread. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is when you do a spread, even of just one card, or three cards, or five cards, or ten cards, or twenty cards, anytime you see a card come up, you kind of want to know instantly the vibe of it, the feel of it, what it's trying to tell you without having to look in a book. I'm obsessed with that. Because I, when I first started, started memorizing everything, and it was H-E double hockey sticks, okay? It was terrible. And so I learned how to do these little mind tricks and learned to read the cards intuitively so that I didn't have to do that again. All right, so court cards. Now, just like a regular deck of playing cards, as I alluded to before yesterday with suits, um, playing cards also have king, queen, jack, right? So in the tarot, we have the king, the queen, we have the knight, and we have the page. Those are the four court cards we have. There are several ways you can learn how to interpret them. One of them is to think of the archetype of said royal figure in the court cards. So, for example, you could think of a king. What is the archetype of a king? Well, Lisa, what is an archetype? Like, you're, what, what does that even mean? Okay, I'll tell you what an archetype is. For those of you that don't know, an archetype is like a collective unconscious pattern of understanding of a concept or a thing. For example, I could say to you, I'm a teacher, like I'm teaching right now. I'm a teacher. And I could go to probably almost any culture in the entire world and say that I'm a teacher and everybody knows what that means. There are different types of teachers. There are different things that they teach. There are different modalities and ways they teach, but everyone understands what a teacher is because it's a very powerful and embedded archetype in our collective unconscious. Okay. Same thing with kings, knights, and queens. Why is that? Well, because in popular culture, we're fascinated by this, even in our, you know, the royal family in Britain or in, you know, uh, literature and movies. How many times have you just been drawn to stories about kings, queens, knights, etc.? So good for you because it's an easy way to learn how to read these stupid things because they're hard. So we like to think about them as their archetypes. So when you think about a king, think about the archetype of a king. He's, he's an authority figure. He's a leader. He's in command of his whole kingdom. He has, you know, uh, he has lords and ladies that are also part of his, his structure. He's, um, he, there can be different types of kings. Okay, this is why when I teach this, the course, Dabba to Diva, I do it very intentionally, even the way I'm laying out these five days for you, because yesterday we talked about the suits. And I gave you the examples of the knights. Do you see how see what I did there? I gave you a little hint of what was coming today because your suit is now going to flavor your king. So think of an archetype as like a cookie cutter shape. So we have the cookie cutter shape of a king or a knight. We're going to use knights today. So knight, and you've got four cookie cutters of there are four cookies that are in the shape of a knight. That's the archetype of a knight. We understand knights are bold and they're brave and they rescue the damsel in distress and they go and do the knight's bidding and they go off to battle and blah, 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 blah. We could go on and on. We all understand what a knight is. You have the four cookies. 
Now what we do is we flavor these cookies with different flavors of icing. Hopefully you're following me here with my analogies. I'm a very analogy driven person. Each flavor is a suit. So each court card will have a different nuance, a different flavor, a different tone depending on its suit. And we can even go further. Another thing I teach in my class, which I can't, I don't have time to dive into here, is we can relate to the court cards as families, like the family court cards of wands, the, 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 the sword family, the pentacle family, cups family. Each family has a very different energy, a different vibe that makes up its beingness. So just keep that in your brain in case you decide to take my class. You'll understand what I mean when, when I get to that during that module. For you today, though, I want you to just think of the archetypes. It's the easiest portal into understanding. So let's talk about the knights again. So we know what a knight is. We know his, like, personification in the world. And let's look at this particular knight. We've seen, we saw him yesterday, and we can imagine that this knight would be very impulsive. He would be very daring. He would be very um, not afraid of conflict or battle or anything. So that particular night, when we see him in a spread, we know that this particular night is bringing the energy into the situation. Here's the tricky part, that you have to kind of learn with practice, and you also have to learn as you're doing a reading to discern, is this a person? Because it's sometimes a court card can represent an actual person, or even you, right? If you're showing up with that energy, or the cards might be suggesting that you have that energy and embody the energy of the king or the queen in the situation to help it move along, you know, or resolve. But it can also just speak to a generalized feeling about it, that the whole situation feels very knight of swordsy. It feels very impulsive and full of conflict, like your workplace, let's say, for example, it might have a very knight of swordsy feel, right? Or your family or your marriage or whatever. So this is kind of a way into learning how to read the court cards. We can talk about the queens too. We can talk about the two queens in particular. Queen of Swords, you can imagine what she's like, okay? Queen of Swords, she's the queen of tough love. She's a bit harsh with her words. She does She does care, though. She still leads by, you know, queens, they lead differently than kings. They don't lead with the same type of authority as kings do. Queens lead with, they inspire, they guide, they model, right? They model what needs to be done. They're, they're much more of the feminine, sort of persuasive way of leading. And each queen will have her own way of doing that. So the queen of swords is a bit of a hard ass. <laughs> She's a bit of a tough love queen. She'll come in and she'll slice and dice you and she, she won't have any emotions about it. Look, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to do this, this, and this. Okay. That's how it's going to be done. We can, we can look at the pages, which are the youngest of the court card families. And the pages are very immature in their suit quality. So the Page of Swords is immature kind of in, in logic, reason, intellect, all that. The Page of Cups is very immature emotionally because cups are about emotions. The, the Knight is too, you know, as you move up the ladder, the Queen is more mature in emotions. The King of Cups is very mature in his emotions. So it's also a, a gauge of where you're at in your um, growth in a particular area. So we've got the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Cups. Both queens show up as queens, right? There's the archetype of the queen, does not change, okay? The cookie kind of cookie is the same shape, but the icing is a different flavor. Here you've got this far, tough love flavor, not a lot of emotion, just it's this or that or the highway. And then you've got Queen of Cups who's like listening and cares and wants to understand and has empathy and compassion and loves, you know, the idea of like holding you and hugging and you can, she's a soft place to fall. King of Swords some, or Queen of Swords, sometimes you need that though. You need a kick in the ass and be like, look at, look at, take all the emotions out of it. What do you need to do? You need to get off your ass and you need to go fix your car so you can go to work. Forget about how you feel about it. Does that make sense? So this is just a very basic introduction to the court cards. You can see it's kind of a bit of a complicated area. But once you get some of these mind tricks that I've developed and, and kind of learn, you know, these um, shortcuts to understanding them, the idea is you don't just want to learn how to read tarot. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just learn to look at a card and go, that's what that card means, verbatim. You don't. You want to be able to look at a card and interpret it. In other words, understand what it means within the context of a reading and within the context of the situation and in the context of your life. Or if your readings for someone else, it's really important then that when you see a card, you know, you can tell by the feeling of it, you can read it intuitively, you understand it has a story to tell you with a moral at the end, okay? So hopefully that helps you understand court cards today. 
do stay tuned again for tomorrow for day four. And if you're interested at all in learning more about my Dabbler to Diva course, just click on the link below this video. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.